Hello and welcome to the Audio Works podcast, episode number two. I am Josh Astrop, and this week's guest is inspirational. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him for coming on for ten years, and he has many skills and many professions. In fact, he's done some amazing work on his own, some solo work, uh, and he's also done some excellent collaborative work. Work for extremely successful, um, rich and famous as well, I suppose, um, people. So. Yeah, listen in. This is going to be a, a great podcast. He's a really, really interesting guy. Yeah, I really wanted to know how he's got to his position and how he's been able to work with the people that he has done. Because when I met him, he worked in a garage as a mechanic and he, he hooked me up many times when I had problems with my car. And now he's, he's working for some of his heroes, in fact, which is, um, which is the ultimate, the ultimate goal, really, in, in my opinion, and particularly in a creative field such as his. So yeah, listen in. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review to this podcast. I hope you enjoy. years ago I think 2000 when did I move to McKetney 2005 I think I moved back to Northampton from Nottingham I think yeah 2005 yeah. 2006 yeah that's when I yeah that's when I thought I'd, um, I'd come down and start Death House whatever it was going to be and you were just doing it from home yeah um, just from a bedroom sort of home studio um yeah, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but I just knew I wanted it to be something creative, mm. um, something by hand that people could afford. That was the main plan. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what method or what it was going to look like or anything. So you were working in Nottingham uh, Garage? Yeah, for Renault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Was it. So, yeah, as a technician, yeah. It's a big contrast. Yes, and, and uh, well, I see a similarity in that, actually, because you're, you're working with your hands. I guess, you're, yeah. I mean, t- to, to me, somebody who can't either... I have worked on cars before, not very... Yeah, well. we've worked on work cars yeah, before, not we? Yeah, but my knowledge is very, very limited, um, and, I, and I quite often give up. Um, and I don't do anything creative like um, any kind of art at all. So to me, they're quite similar. Oh, really? You know, they're... Although but I can you, see you're creative down here. I can still see you've got a side of being... Because you've built this, you've got a vision. That it's, that's sort of being yeah. creative, isn't it? It's, yeah, I suppose. So you were probably doing some stuff while you were working in the garage? Um, when I was in Nottingham, I guess I had a rough idea that it was going to be cool. I come up with the idea of Death House and the Rat logo. Yeah. And I guess to a degree I was going to use spray paint because it was cheap. The one thing, yeah, the one thing I wanted to be was affordable. I didn't want to sort of be an artist sort of selling work for like three, four hundred pounds, that it was sort of untouchable for most people. Mm. I wanted to be out people like with 15, 20 quid. Yeah. I wanted them to be able to buy something. That was my, my audience. Um, and yeah, so it had to be quick and simple and cheap. So yeah, spray paint canvas was the best method I found, which you've got one on your wall over there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right there. Which I, I actually asked you to do for my dad, yeah. because he is an ACDC fan. But then I've stolen it off him, and it's been here for a few years now. Did you go and see him? Did he? Like, in, was it London, Wembley? Was it Wembley? No, no, he didn't. He went to see him 30 years ago or so. Yeah, same one. Yeah, my brother went, yeah. I think On the Milton tour Kings with the Wrecking Ball. Was it the Wrecking Ball tour, maybe? When they had the giant oh, Wrecking yeah. Ball that actually smashed down some of the set during the show. That was quite cool. Um. Yeah, my mum went to the one with my brother. Oh, what, right, recently? Yeah, yeah, oh. last week, last Sunday, was it, or something? Yeah, the crowd yeah. was massive, wasn't it? Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, funnily enough, I watched his car show. Oh, uh, yeah. Cars yeah. that rock or something like that. Really nice bloke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really. I've had some friends who've, like, met him and, yeah. Just, nor- just a normal just really bloke. Normal, yeah. Yeah, and, and but, yeah, everyone's buying normal, all the yeah. cars that he was testing it as well. While he was down there and stuff, that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, so you did a bit in. What made you go from doing a bit on the side, doing some creative work on the side of your regular job, to packing in the regular job? That was a long process. It wasn't just sort of right today. I'm gonna. It was um, yeah. really gradually, sort of um, 
coming up with the style, then obviously at first no one knows what you do, so you sort of, I gave so much away for free, I still do, but um, yeah, just trying to get your work out there for people to see it. It's like being in the band, you just sort of go and gig for free just to get your word out, don't you? Show yeah. people what you do, hopefully get a few people interested, and then you can start sort of saying, well actually, do you know what, it costs this much. Yeah. It's a real gradual process. Yeah. And then you sort of build it up, build it up, and then, yeah, so I just do it in the evenings when I go back from work, at weekends. Then it got to a point where um, I had enough work to sort of go part time, and I had um, I just moved into the fish market then, yeah, which was open three days a week. So yeah, I thought I could be busy enough just to sort of do the garage work in Northampton for yeah Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to earn my rent money, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday was just hopefully I can sell some work and make a bit of money so that yeah that's where it's sort of a gradual process from yeah full-time mechanics to part-time and then yeah so I did it part-time for like two and a bit years I think and then I thought well I've either got to go full at it or just give up if you know what I mean yeah. so yeah I decided to sort of make that step and yeah give up work yeah. I'm always interested into how people have got to where they are if they're doing something different which is usually working for themselves in one way or another yeah. whether it's yeah making something or, or, or a musician or whatever because um, quite often people like don't are really good at something or I've got a passion and but they're at their job their day job that they don't particularly enjoy and they don't know how to get from one to the other it, it is really it, it's just you'll know you'll just know yeah. there's not a, like a set of rules you follow yeah. and it's like oh, I've done them all now now I can give up it's you'll just have that gut feeling think right now's right yeah that's it but, but you have to start trying to do that in the yeah. first place you're not just going to suddenly you know if you're working Monday to Friday 9 to 5 and do something on the side you're not all of a sudden going to go oh I'm making full time money on this other week, that, yeah. on this weekend thing now I'll do that it's like no unless you're in a band and it's like, yeah. like a contract a comes in yeah. but yeah it depends what sort of creative thing you're doing but no to me it was just gradual and yeah there's a leap of faith at one point definitely you know? there's usually it's a big at least a faith. few months where you're not really making enough money <laughs> yeah probably a lot longer than a few months but yeah so yeah you've really got to love what you're doing you've got to love it and you've got to be able to do it with no money mm. if it's about the money then yeah you won't last long yeah yeah if you particularly if you're creating something if it's just about the money you'll just give up because you'll do something not get any money and think right well I'll go back to my job then you got to yeah, it's hard to explain, and unless you're doing it, you'll, you'll sort of know what I mean. But Yeah. Well, David Lynch said, if you do something for money, you die once. If you do something badly for money, you die twice. Mm. I really like yeah. that idea, because you do, although I've, you know, although I've got my own business, and, I, and, and that's unfortunate enough where that's, this is the only job I do. I had two jobs for three years, and now I'm only just doing this, um, which is great. But every now and then, someone will say, can you do this for me? And I, and I don't want to do it, but I need the money. So yeah. you have to do it. So it's like, oh yeah, okay. If you're, if you're, if you're selling, because then you really are selling yourself, aren't you? But then if you do a good job, there's pride to be had in that. Exactly, yeah. Not just, you know, I need some cash. Um, yeah. But I suppose that's everyone's problem. It definitely, yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> Life, isn't it? It's yeah. Everyone need. yeah, not many people are in a position where they don't need money or they can turn it down. Yeah, plus earning that money sort of keeps this going, doesn't it, and keeps you... Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what happens when, you've, when you're going from a job that you don't enjoy to a job that you do enjoy. Quite often the job that you do enjoy doesn't pay enough money. So you do have to continue Yeah. sort of running the boat, both sort of opposite ends of the scale at the same time, doing the thing that you love that has credibility and passion or something, and something that you hate. And Yeah, it, it is a hard mix to sort yeah. of... I meet, like, graphic designers who go to art college and then they want to be creative... Then they go into the graphic design, which they love doing, but then you'll get a contract, say, with a company who come in and say, right, I want you to do this and this and this. And you hate what they want because yeah. you've got your own vision, but you know you just have to sort of... Yeah. You've sort of got to hang your soul up at the door and just yeah, do what they want and then, like... You're sort of a tool rather, yeah. rather but than... But you've got to do it. You've got to sort of... Yeah. It's a hard mix to try and stop what you want to do if someone wants you to do something else. It's, it's getting that balance. Yeah. Yeah. So the fish market was... Was great. I, I thought that was great. Yeah, it was. It was good and bad. I guess it was good stepping stone for me. Definitely. I don't think if I was doing what I was doing now and started off, I don't think there's anything like the fish market in the town that sort no. of would give me that. 
and the fish for people that don't know the fish market was the old fish market um repurposed to and had a sort of cafe restaurant bar yeah. place in it and then loads of independent creative individuals like yeah. you and all designer makers yeah, yeah. Cath, and yeah. then it was an art gallery at the same time so yeah. it worked it was great i really went to well. a couple of all day things there as well and they had a garden area it's a fantastic building but i mean it wasn't very practical like it was hot too hot in the sun yeah it was, it was such a weird because i was there all the time you could see what was wrong with it and yeah, it's weird because it's right. It's right in town centre. It's it's perfect venue, but no one ever crossed the road. It was just something about that junction. No one ever crossed the road. Yeah, and that's it's where really the, weird. It's, the, it's the new bus station is now. Yeah, obviously everyone goes there now. But yeah, now no one ever made that step across the road when it was the fish yeah, market. Definitely, no matter what you did, it was still a hidden gem, despite probably people in our friendship circles and stuff, our social circles knew all about it. It's like not many people outside no. of it did. Yeah. Cause... yeah. And I suppose that's why it um, closed. Why did it close? Was it partly funded? And yeah, yeah, it's partly funded. I think they sort of ran out of money. Um, the bus station, I think, was in process of something happening there, looking for space. It was just, yeah, a lot of things all coming together. But it worked for the time it was there, and everyone had a lot of fun with it. And yeah, a lot of people Even before I was there, it was there. used for other businesses and stuff. It's got a nice history. But then before the fish market had a history, there was another building there. Um, so, yeah, it's always been... A busy little spot. Yeah, that that end of town is, is, is old, isn't it, really, compared to yeah. the outer skirts, really. Um, so you left the fish market, and then where did you go? Um, well, I was going to leave about a year before I did. A space came up, which I really loved, and it's going to be my own space to as a studio. But it was just as this campaign to save the fish market was sort of being out there. So I didn't want to sort of say, yeah, save the fish market, and then sort of say I'm leaving at the same time. Yeah. And I was really gutted that I'd turn the space down. But a year later, I was offered it again. And then the fish market was just, it just wasn't working for me. Three days a week, I couldn't get in there when I needed to. Yeah. People just wasn't coming in. It was just, I don't know, I didn't feel it. And I knew I had to do something. And then the space came up in St. Michael's Road, so perfect. Made the move there. And then, yeah, a few months later, the fish market shut, so... It was the right time. Yeah, yeah, good move. You didn't want to be, you don't want to be stuck without a place. No. Yeah. So that building on St Michael's Road. That was um, above Rogers Printers. Ah, uh, yes, uh, where Spiral Archive. Yeah, above Spiral Archive. Uh, yeah. Really nice feel to it. Nice old shoe factory, which I love, and yeah, loads of original fixtures and fittings. So I felt, yeah, it was more me. Yeah, I I agree. Well, yeah, when I came down to see there, uh, it was. Yeah, yeah, it's what I had vision. What like the fish market I had an empty canvas, and I sort of tried to make it what I thought death house was, and it sort of worked to an extent, but it was so small. But it was like looking back, I looked through the photos the other day of what I did to it, and it was mental considering it was an old fish counter and what it looked like. It was yeah, it was I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I sort of did as much as I did with it. It was definitely a cool place to be. You know, you did feel like there was something happening there. Yeah, I wanted it to be sort of like. Yeah. Um, as you walk past it, if you didn't know what it was, obviously it's got a big sign saying Death House, so that sort of threw a lot of people off. Yeah. And I covered the windows up so you couldn't see in, which a lot of people said, don't do it, but you won't get customers in. But I wanted people to be there and then come in, and they're the yeah. customers I wanted. Yeah, that's If it. you're too scared to come in, then sort of... Yeah, then maybe it's not for you. Yeah, so I wanted people to sort of, like, step in and then, like, oh, my God, which is what I saw all day when people came in. It was really nice for them just to step in, and it's all dark, fairy lights, candles, and sort of... Yeah. I was just working there. It was... It was yeah, I really loved it. That's what I wanted people to see. And remember, even if they didn't like it, mm. you could probably ask them like a few months down the road, oh, do you yeah. remember that shop? And they unique. did remember yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it really was unique. We, and, and much like the place, the, the studio on St. Michael's Road. Yeah, great bit. It's perfect mixture of old, not, not, not that old really, like the shoe factory, but um, um, a, a real a craft, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a handmade. Yeah, the whole yeah, building I thought them. sort of like yeah. the book binders below. Um, there was a nice handcraft thing there. And then I was upstairs, obviously. So yeah, it was a nice sort of building to be in with other people making stuff. Yeah, and the uh, the, the furniture and, and the way you could. Yeah, the stuff I collected and yeah, it yeah. just sort of I could make my space and yeah, that was another sort of stepping stone to make it right. This is what I think Death House should be. Yeah. So what? So you were using it as a place to make. Yeah, just sort of stuff, make a big well mess. as a showroom. Yeah, yeah I was sort of, of um, 
yeah, I had a sort of studio space and I knew I sort of needed work to put work up to sort of show people because the studio was a mess. Mm. Um, then I split the room into two. Using yours of old wood from around the around the town, I'd get out of skips. Everything was sort of found and sourced. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of it would come from the Bantam. They had a massive refit, and luckily the skip was at the back of my studio. So one night I looked out, and they were just chucking all this old wood out. So, yeah, I took all of it and built a wall. <laughs> and so, yeah, I had, like, a, a work room and then a studio room to put work up. Yeah. And that's where, like, the coin, like, the death rooms, I thought it had a nice little ring to it. That was two rooms. Yeah. So that's where I've always kept that word from. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. I, I went there. Did you have... Did you have an opening night there? Yeah, yeah, I did it on um because I was going to do one in the fish market. It was like, oh, you need to do an opening, but I never, ever sort of was happy with how the studio looked or yeah. never had enough money, and I was always putting it off and putting it off, and then obviously I ran out of time. So I thought if I book a date, I can't move from it. So, um, yeah, I chose Friday the 13th. Then if ever I book a Friday the 13th, I know I can never move from that date because it's... Yeah. I can't move it. Yeah. It has to be Friday the 13th. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I did it on Friday the thirteenth, and it was yeah, it was really sort of um, yeah, I wasn't sure what to do. I got a phone call. Should have turned that off, really, shouldn't I? It's not very professional. I know someone called Haley Jennings. Oh, it's my girlfriend. No, it's not her though. <laughs> How well do you know them? Um, oh, she lives in my village. My old school friend. Yeah, but she's married now, so that's where her surname's come from. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the uh, the opening. What the, I didn't have that much work to sort of showcase people or what, um, but I just sort of did a Facebook group as always. Yeah, I wanted to do an invitation but ran out of time, so I wasn't expecting sort of too much to happen. But um, yes, yeah, so I just did a Facebook group, told a few friends, and then got loads of beer in. So I'm out of work. My friend dropped loads of flowers off, so it filled the room up, and then. Play some music, and I did. Yeah, I just got there in the morning, just sat there working as normal, and then gradually during the day, people turned up, turned up, and then my friend from North Ants Radio turned up, and he said, oh, "I'll put a shout out on the radio," so he did a radio thing. Oh right. And then during the day, like loads of people started turning up, <laughs> and by the evening, yeah, it was like a full room, and it was like, but yeah, there's loads of people in my studio. This is weird, <laughs> but it was good. It was really good. Yeah. And then next door to me was the shop Retropolitan, so he had like a joint opening. Yes, yeah, so I remember that, yeah. He had all his sort of friends and customers as well. So, yeah, it was a really nice night. Yeah, that was a cool space. I sort of walked away thinking, God, that was... I'm sort of doing something right, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's when I got that first tattoo, the 13th, just so... Um, I always remembered it. Just so if ever I'm sitting there at home working and I'm like, I'm thinking, God, what am I doing this for? I can sort of remember it and think, actually, do you know what? Yeah, all these that's people what I'm cared. Doing. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they... Or they just wanted a free drink, I don't oh, know. They but yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, they, 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 well, we all know how easy it is to not go out. Yeah. We get invited to stuff. Yeah, it's too easy. Every night of the week. And we quite, and we regularly don't go to anything all week. So it's like, there's so many other, other options. So if people do come to your thing, whatever it is, it means that it's. Yeah, I knew I was sort of doing something and yeah. yeah. So I was really, (coughs) yeah, that was a really good night for me and sort of kept me going. Yeah. And how long were you actually there for? Two and a bit of years, I think. Yeah. And even then I sort of. I still didn't finish it. <laughs> I didn't. It always evolves and changes, and um, yeah, it always looked cool in there, but it never sort of looked how I really, really wanted it to. Yeah. I had loads of ideas, and um, yeah, money and time just always holds you back. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And yeah. then another studio space came up, which was like the ultimate studio space for me. Yeah, so that's. It's saying, yeah, I always, every time I left the studio on St. Michael's Road, which I did love, but the one thing I didn't like, it didn't have a toilet. That was a key thing, mm. which used to annoy me a lot, but it was quite cheap rent, so it's sort of... So how, what did you do for toilet? Go up to the Bradlaw. Oh, really? All my friends Nan just lived across the road, so you'd just sort of... But yeah. for customers, it wasn't very yeah. practical. Yeah. But no, it was good. It had a really good... I took so many photos. So like looking back now, I've got so many photos of the old studios, and it's really nice to look back through and yeah. see what I did and who came and what I made and... Yeah, it's all out there somewhere. So from that, <coughs> excuse me, from that opening night, did you get a lot of work out of that? Yeah, I guess bits and bobs. I wasn't too fussed about getting work. It's more of a, yeah, I know, I'll, I'll, a presence sort of like, yeah. this is where I am, this is what I do. This is what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just interested to see how, 
Because it's effectively like a gallery opening sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. How that would work. When yeah, if ever, if ever I do an event, I always think, like, <coughs> as much as you think, yeah, get loads of people in, get them drunk, get them mm. to buy some work. Although that's really nice. Yeah. I never look at that as something I want to do because... I don't know. If you think that's going to happen and it doesn't, then you're more disappointed and you think about that more than you've had a really yeah. good night. Yeah. So if ever I do an event, I think it's a bonus for selling anything, but I just want yeah. people to come and have a good time. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's similar to like uh, a band playing a gig, isn't it? You know, they want you. If they buy all your CDs, brilliant. Yeah. But, you're but not if they had a good night, to. that's the main thing. Yeah, that's it. If they enjoyed themselves and they enjoyed their experience with the art, whether it's music or, or a book yeah. painting or whatever. That's, that's what it should be about. Yeah, yeah. No, but when you're trying to make money, it's, it is hard to sort of stop you thinking, right, need to sell this, need to sell this. Yeah. If you stop yourself doing it, you'll enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. No, I totally agree. But it is hard. Yeah. When you've got rent to pay, you're like, come yeah. on, just buy and something. Really yeah. Need to sell something. Yeah. You've got to hold yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. But, then but it will come. The, it will come. You yeah. Just keep going. It'll that's work. the integrity move, though, isn't it? Not to not give in to the financial pressure and yeah. be a salesman. Because you could, I, I've thought about it here, you know, it's a house of place, so I, I need some bands in, you know, or it's going to be tight for rent this month. Maybe I should just like email it to people or, or put out a post or something and just really try and sell it and push it. And it's like, I, I consider that, I think there's a really fine line between saying, look, I've got this studio, we think it's really good, you know, we, we try to do this, this is how it's different to other places or something, and and then just being a salesman and saying, yeah. come here and give me a It is a hard mix, it is really yeah. like... I wish there were two of me. I wish there was like a creative side and a business side. This mm. so someone else can deal with. Let's get working. Well, what I've always sort of admired about the way you've done it is um, that you don't do any advertising. Oh no. And I should do. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a really hard sort of. Um, <laughs> I'd like to do no advertising. I do it's very so little. hard. It's so hard. It yeah. is really. And I'm quite I'm often. I'm tempted. Like, maybe I should. Maybe I should do some. It depends on your business and what what you sort of how. Well, this is it. Maybe maybe there is a different approach for a different business, but. I mean, your approach seems to have worked for you. It's a really slow sort of yeah process. That's the problem, isn't it? Because advertising just increases awareness or increases sales, or but then hopefully, if if it's my opinion is if it's good enough, it they will should, work for yeah. itself. It will do it. I do nudge people along like gently, if you know what I mean. Like you know, like the tea bags. I just sent loads more out. Yeah, actually. like yeah, I've still got one. I've got um, one home, yeah, I've just done some more. Um, a little folder and a little book um, just to send it out to some like good customers and stuff just to sort of out of the blue you get something nice in a yeah, post because yeah. people don't get nice posts now but if you get sent something out of the blue and it's nice and it's not a bill you're like oh yeah and, and you sort exactly, of remember it it's, yeah that's exactly the same attitude as the attitude you've got towards the event it's nice they're going to enjoy this thing and then if it, yeah, yeah it's kind it's like 10% the intention behind it is kind of like 10% I'd like to sell more things and they're good things. It's not like you're conning them or anything. They're excellent products. But 90%, this is really nice. Hope you enjoy it. Quite like the idea. Hope you feel good about it. You know? Yeah. We I hope this might spark a little bit. Or I think, ah, oh, you know, when it comes to Christmas, I might order something. Just to keep nudging that people a little bit. Yeah. So I'd rather spend money on, like, 100 stamps rather than magazine stuff. Which yeah. Which just flip through it. And you're not, you're not sending out discount vouchers or anything like yeah. that, are you? And it's more creative. It's more like... Who expects that in the post? Yeah, but so it's you have to always try and think of like different things to do and yeah, sticks in sticks in the customer's mind. I think yeah, it's, oh, it's a customer. The word customer seems a bit weird. Yeah, I mean they are customers because they are buyers, but it's like quite often with you, I suppose it's different because you might be doing something. Do you still do a lot of custom work? Or? Everything's custom. Okay, everything's well, there you go. there's only it's a few bits. Like it's then. yeah, everything's custom. Like I do make a few bits when I get time to sort of think I might try this. Like the last few days I've been doing those eggs I've been posting it yeah I so saw, I sort of I sort of tried doing that and then I post a few up and then someone might say could you do yeah that was like, amazing so so yeah so you posted a picture of an egg and then an egg shell carved it was yeah that's just sort of um, how the hell do you do that that was like most of my work it's always done from stuff people like chuck away stuff you find like old bits of paper leaves and then I was at my sister's a few weeks ago and she's um she's got chickens. And then she had loads of eggs, and you sort of like, you hold one and think, oh, I could do something with this. Yeah. What could I do? And then, yeah, she just had loads of little chickens hatched. And then um, I was just looking at the eggs, thinking you could do something with this. So you sort of look on the internet, hand painted eggs. You sort of, no, no, I'm not sure. How could I apply it to my work? Yeah. I thought, I wonder if you could tattoo an egg. So you sort of start trying and then trying engravers, and then 
mm. it sort of kind of works. And then you find people sort of cutting into the eggs. So you just you just experiment and thinking what works for me. Does it fit my work? Yeah. Or is it something totally different? Um, but then I start sort of painting them and then engraving them. And then last night I was sort of putting lights inside, and it's sort of, they light up really well. Yeah. Because so they're, yeah, they're, they're not they're not solid either. They're slightly translucent. Yeah. See, the light does come through. The and I've sort of drilled itself. through, and it's sort of it's still like my style of work. Yeah. Um, and then it's got the engraving event side. So it, yeah, it sort of still works with my kind of work. Is that is that more time consuming than other materials? Um, work, no, no. Actually, it's quite it's it's quite simple. Just being patient. Yeah, that's that's the main thing. Being patient in case it can just go in. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It is. Well, that's that's why I said, how the hell do you do that? Because it's eggshell. It seems like one of the most fragile things. It's in the not. World. They're really tough. Yeah. Oh, you get a drill bit and point at an egg and try and drill it. It doesn't go straight through. Really? Anything that's come out of a bird. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was at my grandparents today and he's got chickens and they just had two, three chicks hatch. Yeah, they have plenty of eggs. If you need yeah. some eggs, I can hook you up. <laughs> I'm, after, I'm after an ostrich egg at the moment. Hopefully I'll get them at the weekend. But I've been doing geese eggs. They're a lot bigger. They sit there on yeah. someone's shelf. So yeah, it's just another little sort of, let's try this. I'm always trying to think of new things constantly. So you went, you went from your um, stencil spray paint canvas work to... Paper cutting. Paper cutting, that was it. And then, and then, was it straight from that to tattooing? Yeah, I, it, they're still sort of, I still do both. Yeah. But work on the paper cut um, stuff, I sort of did some artwork for Jeffy West. Um, and then through them, doing some artwork and some events with them, we sort of started working together on customising shoes. And then that's sort of where it sort of swung into, could you do, do some engraving? And it sort of turned into tattoo, and it sort of it went off down that route. Yeah. So you've done. What is it? Just leather. Yeah, just leather. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the only thing it really works on. Yeah. Yeah, and and leather's used for so much stuff. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. the shoe company. Yeah, it's got their belts, wallets, all yeah. the shoes. Well, you it's, did my um, oh, yeah, your card one. leather card holder, Tricker's leather card holder, which still looks good. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Grab it out of the bag there. I thought I'd wear it because it's worn. Leather. It's worn a bit, but it's still. Um, it's still there. Yeah, it's still. Uh, nice. Still works. Yeah, it still looks good. Um, so like you that. started to. You were at St. Marcus Road while you started to do that, were you? Um, no, no. Um, so you'd already gone to the new, the current studio? Yeah, St. Marcus Road, I was like two and a half years. And I lived in Abington at the time. And I used to walk past the Jeffy West shop on my way home all the time. And I've been in there a few times. I didn't really know him that well. But you sort of look, walk past, look in the window, think, oh, they're like, it was a brand I really looked up to. It was yeah. sort of, if I could do what they did, then yeah, that's on the path of me, if you know what I mean. It just, it suited me mm. with what they were doing and how they, again, with how they advertise and their style. They're, they're, was it they're local guys, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, both in Northampton, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, that's a great example of. That's an inspirational story. Yeah, they were really, massive they're inspiration. They're internationally yeah. renowned and they're just local guys. And it, yeah, the, yeah, the way they work and sort of they do, th- it was their darker side of things, which, yeah, it suited my work as well. So yeah, I always used to walk past and then that's just as I got to sort of know them. And then they moved to the new premises. And so I used to keep walking past this empty building all the time thinking I'd love to be in there. Um, and then obviously I knew I'd never be able to afford anything like that. And then co-op funeral moved in to the bottom floor. And again, for about a year, I keep walking past, and then I knew it was co-op funeral there. And every time I walk past, I think, "Oh my God, it's like it's my favourite building." And now there's a, like a funeral parlour on the bottom floor. How good would a studio above a funeral parlour? Yeah, be? particularly a studio called Death House. Yes, yeah, so I thought, "Oh my God, it's like I need to think, think like one day, one day I'll be there." And then, yeah, about a year later, um, the opportunity came up. Guy sort of showed me around, and then. As soon as I walked in, I was like, oh my God, couldn't afford it. <laughs> I really couldn't afford it. But, <laughs> but you say when no. you walk around, I thought I can't just walk out and say, no, I don't want to be here. It's, I just had to do it. Yeah. But then luckily at that point, I started doing some work for him. So it sort of, it worked well. And then, yeah, I moved in. Yeah. So yeah, studio above a morgue. <laughs> Death house, perfect. And it's, yeah, it's yeah, brilliant space to be in. Yeah, really interesting. The whole history Another. of the building, and obviously Jeffrey West had been there. It was a picture famous before that, and the shoe trade all before that. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a nice sort of 
bit of history for me to follow. Yeah, similar to similar to the fish market and St Michael's Road, you know, local trade. Um, Handcrafted stuff. Old, that, yeah, yeah, like yeah, framing and, and cob, being a cobbler or, or shoe design and being a fishmonger. You know, they're all sort of yeah, old traditions. traditions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's amazing being in there. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, it's, it is a really interesting building, and it's not surrounded by similar buildings, is it? It's no, no, they were gone. It used to be like all down that St Edmunds Road. There was loads of buildings like that. All that's just been gone. Yeah, if you look at old photographs, that area is really nice. Yeah, and you've had some photo shoots in your in that. Yeah, in yeah, that it's, an, from it's a nice other companies. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice space. Just it's a nice big room. Well, rooms. Mm. But yeah, they they work really well for photo shoots. So yeah, loads of people have used it for wedding shoots. Really, rooms. weddings. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, loads of wedding shoots. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah, because the it, to to describe it inside, it's sort of. Um, well, you describe it. <laughs> I don't know, it's, what to me, for? it's just all like um, not junk. It is all like out of skips, little antique shops, junk shops. It's just collected loads of little things just to sort of make this. Yeah, it is hard Taxidermy, to explain. Yeah, old leather. Just yeah, just like old furniture and um, yeah, dark wood. It's it's great. Funnily enough, it's sort of what I. I had initially tried to do here, but couldn't find the resources or have the money to buy the new stuff or anything. Um, it's all out there. It's um, no, it looks good down here. It's <laughs> got the right colours. It's on that. Yeah, like the colour, the green that's in here is actually the. I got it. There's some old thick wood doors down there. They're sort of steel on one side and wooden on the other. But I think it's the. I think they're the same colour they were. Oh, it's like an old mustard, years 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 mustard colour or something. Yeah, so I cut a square off of that and then got them to copy it. Down the uh, queue and did the rest, and it, it worked out all right. Okay. Um, but yeah, so how long have you been there now? Three years, maybe more. Yeah. I don't know. 2012. I don't know, yeah. Ish. I don't know, no, yeah, before that, I think. Yeah. And that, so around that time, you started to speak to Jeffrey West, got their old building, and started to do some work for him. Yeah, which has been yeah. Um, I can't think one of the first one of the first things it was like um, a little design to sit inside the shoe, which can be printed inside oh. the shoe, which is great. Which is like cutting back to the fish market. There was a designer from Northampton called James Long. He's done really, really well for Northampton. Um, yeah. um, and he did a scarf for Jeffrey West, and he came down to like my studio, and I sort of met him. And I used to think, God, how do you be a designer for Northampton, and how do you get to Design a scarf with Jeffrey West. I didn't see like a journey. How how would you do that? I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't comprehend how someone did it. Yeah. And then yeah, like a few years later, I did this little design, and it happened to turn out into um, they did it as a scarf. Ah. So a few years later, like yeah, that's how you did it. I yeah. sort of like <laughs> yeah. by some weird way round, I sort of I managed to sort of do a scarf with Jeffrey West, and yeah, it was just like when I saw it, it was just sort of like I've done it. Mm. That was it for me. That was it. I was sort of like I could retire now. I've sort of. I got to that point. I yeah. designed something, Jeffrey Weston, and it's yeah, it worked really well. It's yeah, for me that was it. Then I thought I've, I've designed something with Guy. We've sort of worked together, and um, he's made this, and uh, yeah, it's my little design on there, and it's yeah, yeah. That was it for me. I thought I've, I'm a designer now. <laughs> I've sort of done something. I'm an artist. <laughs> I, I could yeah. retire. I'd be very happy with like I got to that point. Something so simple, but so that's a, that was your that was. What your first significant personal achievement? Yeah, that that was. A, Death House. I think. I think selling anything. I think selling your first bits always the biggest sort of. Mm. God, somebody wants something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of like oh yeah, that, I mean even now that still sort of gets me thinking oh yeah God it's someone wants to spend their money they've earned all during the week on something I've made it's. Yeah. yeah. One, th- one thing that I think that I I I feel you should be particularly proud of is, um, Jeffrey, you you. Do a lot of work um, tattooing designs onto Jeffrey West's shoes. Yeah. Now, Jeffrey West's shoes are expensive shoes, aren't they? They're excellent and they're worth every penny, obviously. They're not that expensive. You've no, no. A lot of Northampton shoe. Yeah, you can spend yeah. thousands, can't you? Um, but to, to, to me and most, yeah, I guess you know, in our circle, shoot, yeah. maybe, um, expensive, more money than we'd probably spend on a pair of shoes. But they are fantastically made and they are beautiful. I, w- I would if I had the yeah. money. Um, so these people are buying these shoes 
that are already sort of standalone pieces of art, almost, you know, the level of detail and design and yeah. care and thought that's in them. Yeah, because when we first started sort of like talking about how to customise the shoe it's been built, in my head I was thinking, well, they're amazing shoes, why would you yeah. want anything more than to it? Like, this is a, surely this is it. No that's my point, like, they're already amazing and they're expend, Well, they're, they're worth a bit, fair amount of money and then people come to you and saying, can you tattoo them yeah. entirely in some cases? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that, I'd, I didn't <laughs> think it would work, but no, it's, it's, it's been really good. Yeah. It's, yeah, more than good, really. It's, um, See, you, you seem to be working, like doing weekends or something. Yeah, yeah, we do regular. like events um, all through the year. In their own stores like London, Leeds, Manchester, Northampton, mm. um, and then yeah, I got to the New York store, which was yeah, that was good. And then yeah, yeah they had a store in Taipei as well, um, and I managed to get a trip out there. Yeah, mental. Yeah, yeah. it's like being a band on tour. You sort of you do your local gigs, don't you? Yeah. You sort of do local pubs, and then you sort of do a little venue, and then you sort of do the road mend, and you think, oh no, well I've done the road mend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you sort of go down to London, and you sort of do a few at London, and then. And then after that, you think, oh, what do I do next? And then perhaps you might get one in Europe or something. And it's just that sort of yeah. steady progress. And when, you, when you've done like a gig in Europe or you've done one in the States, you sort of, it's a massive tick in the box, massive mm. tick. Yeah. You sort of don't think you'd ever, ever get there unless you bought your ticket yourself and sort of you went there. Yeah. For someone else to think, do you know what? I like what he's doing. Yeah. Let's get him a ticket. There. Yeah. That's like a massive sort of. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's significant. They're, they're not only do they, they value your work, they want you to work for them, and they want you to do it in a foreign country. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's not just a train ticket to London. <laughs> yeah, it is. When I look back, I think, man, it was a crazy little bit of time. It's yeah, I saw it's all at once. It was brief all... interview on the no- local radio station or whatever it was when you were there. In is that right? Taipei. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That was a um, yeah TV thing. Obviously, couldn't. It's a thing over there called Apple. Apple TV. Nothing to do with Apple, American Apple, but um, mm. yeah, and they're doing a massive newspaper called Apple. And like the first day I'd got there, which is, I'd gone on my own, which is hard enough anyway. <laughs> yeah. I never go anywhere. So um, yeah, you sort of got to go to Bangkok and I was just standing there and, and I'd only just started engraving. It was only sort of a bit of fun. Yeah. It wasn't anything that serious. It was just sort of like free engraving when you get your shoes. We'd do it here, there. And then for suddenly someone to say, right, do you want to come to Taipei? And do it. It's like shit. This has got to be serious now. This is like I need yeah. to do this properly. This no is excuses. like a proper. Yeah, yeah. So about two. I only had about two weeks to sort of sit down with my engraving stuff, thinking, God, I need to like be good at this. <laughs> this is professional. Yeah, now, I'm thinking really? like I don't yeah. know what they're expecting. I, I really don't know what they're expecting at all. Yeah, it was scary. And then yeah, for those two weeks, I worked out different methods for getting like stencils onto the shoes without marking the shoe, and I managed to do it just in time. And then obviously, yeah, I remember just being in like Bangkok waiting for the next plane, thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long way from home. <laughs> I am a lot, and on my own, and you can't like sit and talk to anyone, you sort of like, you want to tell someone like, this is mental, isn't it? Yeah. But you can't, you're just on your own, with your own thoughts, and then you get off in Taipei with like 50 quid, you're like, right, what am I doing now? But it, it, it went really well, sort of, yeah, I met someone there, and then um, got taken to this nice hotel, and... It was all just mad. It's all really mad. It sounds like some rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Thing, but, yeah, it does. Um, it was really hard work. It was like 12 hours a day. Yeah. Um, and I got taken to the shopping centre. Um, and then it was at night time, so they're sort of still setting up, and it's this shopping centre called Bella Vita, and it's like, it's all Prada and Gucci. It's all like Ooh, very nice, yeah. a world I'm not used to. Yeah. And as soon as I walk in, I still didn't know anyone, or like language barrier and everything. It's just, what am I doing here? <laughs> What am I doing here? And then as I walk in, there's all these big posters. And I'd, I'd have to email in some of my artwork and some photographs of what I did. But they made them into these massive billboards. Massive billboards. Oh, wow. As you go into the shopping centre, it's all the way around. Jeez. And it's got my name. Like, massive letters. <laughs> like, massive letters. Wow, well, your name literally on a billboard. And it's like Ace Stevenson, Northampton, Jeffrey West. And then loads of stuff I couldn't read. But it was massive. And as I'm walking in, I'm thinking, this is serious. This yeah. is really serious. This is like... It's all like, do they? Do you know what I'm doing? Yeah, that's what I felt like. I <laughs> you know, to say, I'm not like, that big a deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was like. Yeah, I'm right. like, I'm only got a little tiny studio in Northampton, and yeah. I hardly do this at all. But I couldn't tell him anything. <laughs> I had to sort of like have my cap on and say, right, yeah, this is me. 
So people were buying Jeffrey West shoes, and then you yeah, were doing yeah, yeah. It was sort of it was really well organised. I just I knew it would be over there. It's all amazing how they run things over there. And um, sort of schedules and yeah, everything's perfect over there. And so the next day, sort of every day in the morning, I had to sort of stand in front of a crowd and talk about me, what I do, Northampton, the shoe trade, and Jeffrey West. Yeah. So it's nice representing the brand I really loved. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Northampton, yeah, every morning I had to do that. And then they'd have appointments in the afternoon where people would bring their shoes and get whatever they want. Yeah. Then they'd have an interpreter. That was one thing I was worried about. Yeah. That I just wouldn't understand what people wanted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, language barrier. It's, it would be impossible to design, yeah. to, to to get across without... Or are they going to put, like, um, yeah, sort of um, their language, and I'm just going to have to, like, try and copy this or, like... Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, it, the week was amazing. It was like a whole week there. And then come back, and it was like... Whew. And then within a week or two, I had a trip to New York doing the same thing. Brilliant. Which was nice. It yeah. was like... Yeah, after I came back, I thought, right, I can be tired now. Not with money, but with achievements. Yeah, I thought, oh, yeah, right. yeah, in terms of achievements, that's pretty... Well, I, I know, yeah, I was just sitting like, on a New York street engraving, and it's just sort of like... Yeah. I haven't spent any money yet, and I'm here. For some reason. <laughs> and it's like... Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic, yeah. So again, it was just like, that's it for me. I thought, if it all ends now, it's, it's totally fine. fine. It's, it's totally fine. fine. Have, you, have you got goals or things that you want to do that you're working towards, or are you just sort of taking these One thing has been a book. That's always been like the main end yeah. thing. So now, yeah, most things are like really, really, really ticked off. They're like... There's been so many. It's just been like, I never thought I'd do that, Tick. Never thought so you're going to turn to drugs and alcohol now? Because you've got nothing no. else to do. I'm, I, yeah, I'm always going to make things, yeah. and it's just... Um, but no, the book's the main thing, I yeah, think. Yeah. That's always been from the start. One so you're, you're actually working on it, are you? Or? Yeah, it's more of a scrapbook, just from like... Yeah. From when I was little, growing up, looking at art books. They'd be amazing, you look through it and think, oh my God, this work's amazing. And then at the end of the book, you'd see they've got loads of money, or... They're in these big galleries and they're selling for thousands of pounds. But there was, there was never a journey of, well, how did you get to that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. None, I've got no art books at home where it says the journey of how anyone ever, like... Okay. So I wanted to make a book for someone who's just at home who likes drawing. Yeah. And I want to be an artist, but society now is like, you can't do anything creative now because it just doesn't pay. So people just put off Yeah. straight def- away. Definitely. And people think they can't draw at school. They're like, I can't draw. And they're sort of like, that whole thing's lost and I hate that. So the book wants to be just like a scrapbook of this is what I did. Mm. And you don't need money. That's, that's, that's incredibly honest for people who are making something. Like, that's, like, that's like a musician putting out their lifetime greatest hits of just like 15 songs, but, but including the first mm. song they ever wrote in their bedroom. You know, nobody does that mm. because it takes a bit of... Because I've read so many like music books and it's expose like... Expose yourself. You read them and they start off and it's like, had no money, da, da, da. then we got this deal. And yeah. then from that point onwards... Yeah, then it was excellent, and then it went bad. <laughs> yeah, usually. but for me, like, being an artist, no one's ever going to say, right, here's a deal. That just doesn't... Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, that's... Yeah. There's no... It's not going to happen. There's no payday as such. And Maybe. I can't sort of suddenly start saying, well, my work's yeah. a thousand pounds. I can't... No. I can't just suddenly say that. Yeah, you've dug yourself a hole now. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, well... So yeah, I wanted to do a book of, like, if you've got no money, but you're sitting at home and you like drawing... This is what I did. Yeah. And I didn't spend hardly any money. And as long as you like what you're doing, then this is what I did. Yeah. And so hopefully the end of the book, there's people I've wanted to meet along the way. Sort of like people have inspired me. I can just give them a bit of work back and say, you know, let's do a swap. Yeah. You gave me some brilliant songs and this is my bit of work for you. And Mm -hmm. yeah, there's been loads of ticks. Yeah, I remember you've, you've, you've mentioned that to me before, actually. There's a lot of people that you're inspired by and you wanted to do some work. So you've been fortunate yeah, just to, to sort of say exchange like, some artwork with them. Yeah. Which is, yeah, the ultimate payback. Yeah. Because these people do, you know, it's difficult to, if you ever meet somebody famous or somebody that you look up to famous or not, without saying, I fucking love you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to say, but you can't because you just look like a creep, you know. <laughs> so, that yeah, being able to create something that you love and, and give them... Yeah, it's a really good way of sort of saying thank you, isn't it? Yeah, and then I've got some of their work in my record collection, and they've got yeah. my work. So it's yeah, a nice yeah. little. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. So that's what I've always tried to do, and like, um, yeah, just build them up. So yeah, most of them are sort of 
gone now. The last one's um, Brody Dow from the Distillers, which is like the start of Death House. It's where everything's come from. Yeah. And I know it, it's, it's possibly quite easy to, especially nowadays with the internet, it could be quite easy to set up, but I want it to be like hard work. Yeah. I want to earn it. So it's like the last yeah. page of my book, it's gone through full yeah, yeah. For me seeing the Distillers yeah. on stage and thinking, yeah. do you know what, I'm going to do something. Yeah. Walking away from that gig. So yeah, I want to sort of have this whole journey at the end of it. She comes to my studio or something, mm. and um, when you get married, <laughs> she's married to that Josh Hom. So I think, ah, they, I think it, yeah, yeah it's formality. But yeah, a, like a couple of years ago, it nearly happened, and I'm glad it didn't because it was too soon. I didn't want it to be so rushed. Yeah, okay. But yeah, you she, had an opportunity to meet her. An opportunity for her to come to the studio. Oh right. And it was like how what? Just through Instagram, she saw some of my work. Oh right, she wanted to she come, come and look, and um, and you said no. No, I didn't say no. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, she wanted to come and um, we said about like, oh, perhaps she should do like a gig there or something. And I, I was just like, fuck. Oh, shit. That's, yeah. Especially if she's with her husband or something. Jesus. And then I'd cut these leaves for um, her kids. And um, yeah, I sent them down to the venue and she did a one-off gig in London. Um, so I sent them down there. So she's got them. So she has got my work, yeah. which is kind of nice. But yeah, I just wanted to sort of one day in the future. Mm. So I want to see. Hopefully she'll come to my studio or something will happen. Perhaps I don't know. But if it does, yeah, I can sit with her and I can just say to her because she doesn't know any of the story yet. Okay. So yeah, for me, yeah, like yeah. meeting her all those years ago. Yeah. Obviously she's inspired. Yeah, it's just yeah, as far as she's concerned, it's just a, a one one time meeting. But obviously yeah. there's there's been a bigger. I can plan. say to her, you know, what? I met you twenty years ago and yeah. you inspired me to do this, and I could just give her this big yeah, book. Yeah. That's the ultimate. Thank you, isn't it? Yeah, the same without that gig, none of this would have happened. That's such a great. And it wouldn't idea, have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Like if I wasn't at that gig, I didn't meet her. It it wouldn't have happened. I don't think. Yeah. That's brilliant. I so think yeah, hopefully. Yeah. That's that's cool, man. That you're already well on your way, but obviously, well, I think it's like anything. The, the more you do, the more you achieve. You know, the sort of more that you want to do. And yeah, yeah, I don't know what sort of. If it ends now, I've done more than I ever ever thought. Yeah, like ridiculous amounts. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, really. Yeah, there's lots of things. We, I, I think that's good, a good point to end it. Yeah, talking about the end of your book, um, but there's lots we didn't talk about, so we'll have to do another one at some point in the future. Um, but if anyone wants to follow you or see anything you've done, what Tell can them where they I live. do? Yeah. Me around, yeah. <laughs> follow me around the village. Yeah, what's your address? Yeah. Uh, no, where can they find see you on your Instagram. Instagram and all that stuff? Um, the Death Rooms. I think it is. The yeah. Rooms. yeah. yeah. Um, website is just ason.com. Excellent website name. Yeah. It was going to be Death House, but someone had got it. It was going to be the Death Room, someone had got it. It was going to be Death, the Death Shop, someone had got it. Everything had gone. Yeah. Punch an Ason, no one had it. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, I might as well just use Ason. Well, yeah, it's you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook, Death House. Um... I think, I think. Super. That's all we need. Thank you very much. No, thanks. Thanks for, um, yeah. I'll forget what I do. So that was the powerful Death House, uh, Asen Stevenson. You can find him on Facebook, Instagram, all the places that he said. You spell Asen, A-A-S-E-N. It's worth checking out his work. I'd be surprised if you don't track him down and try and get some yourself. I've got a few pieces and uh, that's not enough. So yeah, he's, he's really good. And as you can tell from that, he's really humble. He's just working hard at what he wants to do. And it's really nice to hear when somebody who's working so hard for such a long time that it really pays off and they start to get where they really want to be going. So, yeah, thanks very much for for listening to that. And thank you very much to, to Aeson for doing it. It was a real honour. And, uh, yeah, to know somebody like that who has who is capable of so much, who's, who's already achieved so much, but his, you know, his future goals and how he's got there is really inspirational anyway. Much like Chris Serbin last week, it really makes me think about what I'm doing uh, and maybe I should get off my ass a little bit more. So yeah, 
thank you very much, Ace and Stevenson. So please don't don't forget to rate, review this podcast in iTunes. Subscribe so it comes straight into your iTunes every week. You can also find us on the Acast app if that's how you listen to your podcasts. But thank you very much again, and we'll see you next Wednesday.